Welcome everybody to this first episode of Blender today. This uh, is an experiment. I'm trying this for the first time. I'm um, already using uh, used to make this in Spanish, so it's gonna be the first go. And what what is Blender today live? It's um. I, it's like an attempt to fill a gap in communicating Blender changes uh, all these things that happen in Blender development daily basically it's like every day there are new things especially now with Blender 2.8 um, but even then even before like there is a new Blender 279a coming like a, a fixed release so it really never ends there is always things going on so um, I, I think there is a gap in that communication. I think that if you want tutorials, there's like new tutorials every day. You can learn anything and everything inside Blender. Um, there is really documentation, uh, like way too much, <laughs> but there is a lack of actually showing what, what's going on, what's new, what's uh, everything basically. So this is an attempt to do that. This, uh, there, there is actually already a, a um, um, a channel in Blender, in the Blender um, community, that is called Blender Developers, that it it basically has that. It has videos where we show, um, well, we or the developers make just to show features, to explain the features. But I think there is uh, there, there was a lack of, of this, or more of the, the, the interaction of people, what, what, are, what people are saying. So uh, this I am used to like start saying hi to everyone and hey, Purple Pablo, <laughs> thank you, Lars, Legend of Blender. Um, uh, hi everyone, this is, the, this is the, the, the whole point of making it live actually. So I just compiled Blender 2.8 and the Grease Pencil branch. So <laughs> the computer is still literally screaming from the my, my laptop. I'm, I'm at home by the way, so welcome home. <laughs> Um, I just finished compiling Blender 2.8 and the Grease Pencil branch because uh, as, a, as a first episode, actually, I just wanted to show the, the latest stuff. So um, if you follow Blender development, there is, it's, it's not too hard to <laughs> follow Blender development. Actually, everything is pretty, um, pretty transparent. There is the, of course, there is Blender Nation where you can follow the news, but also nowadays there is, um, well, the blog post that we're making in the code blog, in code.code.blender.org. There is also this week in Blender development, which is a bit more um, technical, but really straight to the point. There is, um, if you just Google for it this week in Blender, or usually Bart puts it up in on Blender Nation, and it's basically a weekly report of the the, the actual commits, the commit log. So you can see things that uh, are um, a bit too technical, maybe if, if you're not into that, but if you are if you like, if you're a super nerd, like <laughs> I am, like many of us are out there, there is um, this uh, resource, which is pretty cool. It's actually very new. It's only been uh, around for a few months. There is um, the code blog, which is for more like, more like articles of what's actually um, uh, going on, there is uh, more official releases, benchmarks, files, there is uh, a, a bit of everything, like the, the Grease Pencil team uh, released something in December that is uh, showing some of the, the new features. Any new development or roadmap also is there. If you haven't seen the 2.8 Christmas report by Dalai Felinto, I recommend you to read it because it's it really goes in detail of what's going on, what what happened, what what everything really. So you can it's a bit bigger. Uh, there there is OT in Caminandes. I didn't even introduce myself. Um, <laughs> what kind of manners are that, Pablo? My name is Pablo Vasquez. I'm uh, an artist. Actually, I'm not a developer. I made a few um, add-ons and stuff, but I'm not an actual developer. I worked at the Blender Institute in Amsterdam, so Blender Animation Studio, where we make open movies. We made uh, movies you may have known from, like uh, Big Bug Bunny. I didn't work in that one, but it's from the Blender Institute. Uh, Sintel, I did work on that many years ago. Um, the Caminandes series, uh, the Gooseberry Project, Cosmos Laundromat, and uh, the Agent 327 more recently. But in those um, 
the projects, there is always something in common. It's, it's improving Blender, like making it better. How? Well, by making it hard for the artists to, to work there, basically. It's a uh, find a something in Blender that is lacking, that is weak, a weak point in Blender, and then just trying to improve it. So that is the, the, the main, main... Uh, um, the drive behind making the open movies. And in those open movies, we get to play with software. We get to play with, with Blender itself and improve it. And one of the projects that we are working on is Spring. This is a new uh, short film that is going on on Blender Cloud, where you can read more about it. But there is also the, the, the Hero project, which is completely done in Grease Pencil. And it's also done in Blender 2.8 in the most part, as, <laughs> as much as possible, because Blender 2.8 is still in a very early stage. So um, uh, we're going to cover this, these two things that are happening right now. They're the biggest development that are happening. There's also movies going on. People make movies somehow in Blender. <laughs> and they, uh, like actual feature films, they already made a few. So uh, they, the, Blender is actually getting tested and, and constantly, but... These are the projects that I'm going to focus uh, on, at least today. Hello, everyone. Pablo, your manners. Yes, thank you. Hey, Pablito, I missed the Spanish last, uh, last, last, uh, last week. So this one, we are going to focus on 2.8. So without further ado, there is behind the scene of the Agent 327, by the way, is the last short movie. As you can see a little bit of what, how we work at the Institute, it's all Fun and games, but um, it's, it's actually fun to look at. Let's open Blender. So the latest blog post in the code blog is the outliner improvements in Blender. Sorry, I was just <laughs> reading the, the comments. You're, you're reading the same t-shirt. Yes, I am. Blender Conference 2017. Yes, represent. The um, the blog post goes around the latest features in the outliner. So the outliner got recently some pretty cool features, uh, mainly developed by Dalai Felinto. He's been working, we were working together actually, and part of the UI team, the, the interface and the experience um, part of Blender. So I've been focusing on that lately, and it's actually a pretty nice and fun way to work um, together, to, to share, um, point of view, feedback, he will share a patch, so I get Blender, I compile it, I test it, and then it's a back and forth. Uh, so that gets things really fast. Um, we're going to see that live, so I made a video about it, but here you can make it, you can ask questions, just shoot. Let's see. But first I'm gonna shoot Blender. Not literally, but yes. So, I have compile here, let's see. Blender 2.8 bin Blender. Do you compile Blender? Shall we make a video once about compiling Blender? It's uh, it's really handy to do it, especially if you want to follow development. But you can also get well, like what I'm playing with now. You can get it if you want to join um, the join the party. We can click around together in um, Builder the Blender. Actually, you can go to Blender.org, just like download, like you will download a regular build, and then at the bottom you'll find the Go Experimental. Here is where we play with fire. This is the latest and greatest code the developers make. Here you'll find on the top, you'll find the master build, so the ones that are based off master, which is at this point is just basically 279A, <laughs> pretty much, with a few more fixes. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> and um, Below you find the good stuff, the good broken stuff. That is Blender 2.8, the lovely Blender 2.8. You'll find for uh, Windows 64, 32 is people still using, and uh, Mac, Linux. I'm running on Linux here, so let's see how it goes. Is everything going fine? For, uh, please, so tell me if everything's fine. The sound is fine. Uh, I just want, don't want to mess. Um, <laughs> too much to just keep talking and then uh, break anything in the meantime. I have you guys in here in a small window, so I'm I get to read. I'm opening one opening one of the files if you want to play along. That it's in Blender.org. 
There are many files there, demo files. The, in Blender.org, here you will find the news. You will find the future, Blender 2.8. So if you click there, you're going to visit the, the page that is dedicated to Blender 2.8. It's all about the 28 project, who's making it, um, uh, what's going on, some pictures with the, um, the demoing the coolest and latest and greatest. Um, hi, Francesco and Sergey, they're both uh, working there. Well, Sergey is like, you, you probably heard of that <laughs> name before, Dr. Sergey. There is also Grease Pencil where we can see some of the features here and we're going to add more videos. but. If you keep going, you will find, try it yourself. Do not use in production, that's worth saying. Um, but here you'll find all the files. The one I'm, I'm going to play with now is the Wasp bot, which is pretty neat. The Wanderer, the one that is on the, in, in the cover, the guy with the guy, the, the guy with the one with the guy here, you can also find it. That's pretty cool. They, they, the artists made this and released them as CC BY and share alike. You should check them out. So, look at this dude. This is running on my laptop, by the way, so uh, beware. It's a um, it's an XPS with a 1050. Just for the for the nerds like me. This uh, blend file I already prepared. I have it like with the with the all the collections open, but it's not like you're gonna see it exactly this way. These um, collections that you're going to see here in the top level, they currently use a icon that is not really the one we're going to use. Is the is is the menu icon? When you collapse and and a header, you have this menu icon. So uh, it's not going to be the final one. We are actually working on it, and we're looking for um, icon designers. There's already some tests going on, so you should check out the um, the blog post in code.blender.org if you want to collaborate and you want to join the icon um, quest, <laughs> please do. So the main thing in this new outliner, besides being a bit cleaned up, is a, a way to filter. So until now in Blender 2.7, you'll have everything, all the objects and every all the data there in, in Blender. And uh, in 2. Point, in, sorry, in the Blender outliner, and in 2.7, all the objects Every single object belong to the, belongs to the scene, so it's directly there. There is an object, and it belongs to the scene. That's that's how the data uh, model works. In the in Blender 2.8, there is this concept of collections, which is pretty actually pretty common in, in some other um, softwares. Actually, I think um, Maya. I don't know about Max, but I think Maya added it a few years ago, and. Um, it's a similar concept. Basically, it's like another layer of for organizing your scene. So you have the scene, which has collections, as many as you want, but by default has one, which is called the master collection. So if you have, if you don't want to set up anything and you just want to go like old style, you will have the master collection there. So uh, don't worry. Or the moment you make a new object, it's gonna add it there. So um, actually, maybe I could just start with a empty file. Somebody was commenting in the in the video that I went straight to the hardcore. So I'm gonna start with an empty file. This is how, let's even go further and load the factory settings. Eww, the poor cube that everybody deletes. And the tiny UI, which I'm gonna make bigger for my fellow blind people like, uh, like me. So, by default, you start with an empty, with, with one collection, with the default collection. You also have the master collection, but you don't see it uh, there. If you delete this collection and you start adding, if you add an object, then it will uh, make a new collection for you. So this is, these are the three objects that we have by default. They belong to a collection. And this is more or less how it used to look in Blender 2.7 but it will be without the collections. So it will be something like this. What did I do? I actually used the filter in the new filtering options. The new filtering option is just this little, um, uh, what's the name of this thing? You see, that's the problem with doing it in English. I have to remember the names. It's a filter icon. So 
you can also filter by by string you can just type like like you used to but the cool thing is that you can filter um, by object types or actually data types in this case you can filter by the collections so this will be just like having a regular if I had a monkey this is like having the um, how, how is it called it in the 2.7 is all scenes or scene current scene current scene I haven't used 2.7 in a while current scene this will be like the equivalent if you enable collections then you see a bit more of the context and I, I suggest that you use the collections because they they it's it's better to grasp grasp your mind they kind of replace the old la layer system remember those 20 little uh, squares that you will see in the header that you have to click around and it was very limiting you couldn't even put a name to them you could use an add-on but then the add-on is messy because you have the add-on but your friend doesn't have an add-on so when you send the file he doesn't know which layers is just a bit confusing um even i made an add-on once well actually in amaranth one of my add-ons they uh there is uh, something to control the layers view but it's not ideal because you only had 20 little squares to play with so having collections is much better in that sense in um once you have the, the collections filter, you can also filter by objects. So in case you have more than one collection, for example, say you want to add a new collection. Um, ideally, you will right click and add a new collection. We're working on it. But for now, you can just go in the edit menu and just click a new collection. There you go. Collection number two. What a great name. Let's put something else. What a great name. There you go. So you can name collections, that's actually pretty neat. And you can even nest them. So you can move it, like click and drag to move it. At the moment, it doesn't give much feedback more than this color, but actually today, oops, I sorry if I hit the microphone, there was someone with, with headphones. Today, like as we speak, um, the live was actually working on adding actual labels and enabling this uh, drag and drop in a more um, clear way because you can do it now but the feedback is not there so I added my collection up there I put it inside the collection number one which is I am gonna call it awesome collection so, because it's pretty awesome it's, it's everything I, it's all I have so it's pretty awesome and um, once you filter out you can see the objects but if you disable the objects you will see like a list of all the collections which also makes it uh, better it's just if you have, if you receive a file with a thousand objects, and you will probably go a bit uh, crazy. This will be better when I show it with an actual more complex file. If you have any questions, please leave them here. I'm having some iced tea, by the way. It's just <laughs> as foam. <laughs> now, um, these objects they also have their data inside, which it's okay. It's very useful sometimes. Not most of the time. Sometimes lamp is called lamp, cube is called cube, or cube 001, and is the most useless thing ever, unless you want to see the materials and the texture, all the levels down there. It can be handy, but most of the time it isn't, because we want to see objects. We want to control objects, see their relationship. If an object is parent or is children of another one, so if I make this children, then how many levels down is this? You see, it's a bit noisy, which is great. It's great for a reference, but you can disable that now. For now, we are using the, the branch icons, the modifier icon. Not ideal. We still have working on it. If you have any ideas on what to do, go to the code blog, and in the latest post, you'll see um, the link to the call for icons. Here, um, I disable the data and it's much cleaner, but I can also dis disable the children. Imagine if you have like a long tree, you can disable them. So now you don't see them and it's much more clean. You only see the top level. What if you want to disable by type? There was an option before that you will just click on a uh, object, for example, like a lamp or a mesh, a camera. And if you wanted to see all the cameras, if you had more than one camera, for example, you could just go same types. But that's kind of limiting because it will show the current um, object type, the same objects of the same type. And it will 
be a bit limiting because if you want to see all the cameras and then you click away on the lamp, you will miss it. You will you will lose that selection. So it's okay, but that led to like add-ons. Like <laughs> even I made another add-on that it was only for this for controlling the um, the lamps, just to select them and see them, see what's going on and all of that. So now you can actually filter out object types. So you can filter only the lamps or well, in this case, only the lamps or only the uh, cameras, for example. Can we view only one collection in the viewport? Yes, you can. You can just disable the collections. The collections are, uh, they have hierarchy, so you can actually click, click out and they, um, they uh, sorry, click on them and then they will be disabled. All the children will be disabled. And for example, if I have, let's, let's get messy. Let's get the Suzanne in the collection that is called what a great name so if I enable this collection do you get to see or I'm I'm chopping up there you go I was chopping the, the last bit so if you click on on it if you enable it and the parent is not enabled then it won't be um, visible but if you have uh, in this case I have disabled the the what a great name but since the object is also in the parent, it means it's still visible. So that way um, I can have the object in both. This is especially great when we do um, something with the overrides, which is a whole other level that needs probably another video. Um, it's an override that you can attach to the collection, for example. So you have the monkey in two collections, one in the top and one in another collection inside, just like we do here with the Suzanne. If you, if I would add a override to the what a great name uh, collection that changes the color of the Susan to blue or red or whatever, then um, these when I have this collection enabled, the object will have that color. But I can disable it, and it will have the color that the original color because it doesn't have that override. It's a better to see it in actual action, so I'm not gonna display it now. But just to show the the hierarchy, I can just select the monkey and the option should be in the right click of the object but for the time being is up here you have to right click in the uh, actual collection the parent collection and then you can click on remove selected so that will remove the object from the top collection but still here so now if I disable it and let's hope it doesn't crash it doesn't there you go ciao Suzanne so there you go, as you see, and it's disabled. It's not only hidden, but it's disabled. So the shadow also goes away. Where's hidden? Where's visibility? Well, if you're in cycles, you can, uh, or in EV, you can disable the uh, ray. Well, I'm in EV, but if you're in cycles, you can disable the camera ray, but ideally you will have a way to hide objects. That's a whole nother topic. We this is many layers of work that need, that need to be done um, and decisions to be taken in order to keep the system light and everything. So I shown the object types, these, uh, the collection filtering and last but not least is the um, filtering by state. So you can filter out if the object is uh, visible or the object is selected or the object is active. Um, these are still work in progress, but basically they replace the old uh, options that we, we had here, which is view, um, um, it was active, selected, and um, visible, I think. Some questions, okay. I just wonder if the GTX 1050 is good or bad for 3D editing. Well, I am using it, um, a, uh, I can now open the file actually, now that we've seen the, the basic, uh, setup this um, laptop is using a 1050 a GTX 1050 it's a laptop uh, an XPS a Dell XPS um, from last year from last year so it's 9560 or something like that but also remember that laptops now they come with the um, Thunderbolt uh, board or like a USB-C Thunderbolt 3.0 Yes, three. 
that allows you to connect a external graphics card. So that is pretty bad. It's very expensive. I look it up for my computer, it's a bit expensive, but you can basically have this <laughs> box where you can just put desktop um, cards. So then you can basically have anything. You can have a, a crappy Air laptop, laptop with a graphics card that is maybe not the best, but then you can have a desktop level that, uh, graphics card there. And they run up to like 80, even 89, maybe 90% of, of the capacity. So it's pretty good. Any other question? Did I miss anything? People are saying hi. Um, can we view only one collection? Yes, I already replied that. In my work, I only use one layer as a mask to other layers. How does it work in the new collection uh, concept? Well, it will work in a similar way, but with um, with um, collections. So at the moment, it's not implemented yet, so you won't see it. But the the goal, if I change to cycles, it's gonna die because cycles by default starts rendering, which it shouldn't. It should just start with um, pause at least, or let you choose which kind of viewport you want, if solid view or uh, something. <laughs> that is a whole other... Blender 2.8 is all over the place. It's not gonna be ready next week, guys. It's That's the sad news, but it's gonna be amazing when it is th once it is there. Like, I didn't even cover workspaces yet, which is a whole other topic that is a pretty, um, pretty big. But basically, you will have the same way you have um, the layer system right now in 2.7, where you can choose um, what affects what, you would be able to have that again with um, um, with the collection system. So you could choose which collection is a mask of what, for example. Collection you can use for any kind of if, for anything, really. And you can have as many collections as you want, so it's pretty nice. Um, dynamic collections will also be a, a thing one day where you can just set the, I don't know, a num the object starting with this name. or The system is ready for that, but it's not uh, implemented yet. Um, let's see. Maya, Maya layers are pretty basic for the scene. Good. Then, well, ours are pretty basic too, so... All right, is there a way to bind collections to keys similar to how you can do with layers? Not at the moment, but that is next on the on the schedule. At least for me, I'm, I'm working the UI part and there is something we want to do that actually is an idea from Tom, Don Rosendahl, the original creator of the, of the outliner and the layer system and there were so many other things, pretty much all of them there, that all, all, everything that works, that still works, well, all these weird concepts, they are, uh, they, they still survive today because they're so simple, yet they still work. And for collections, but like for layers, it's so easy. We change to with one, two, three, and then you can um, switch so easily between layers that the idea is to bring that speed to collections. So maybe sort them. So one, two, three, and then you can sort them uh, by... Uh, sort them out by priority or like however you prefer, like custom sorting in the outliner. Right now it's sorting by uh, the way you link them, the collections and the objects, the way you um, here alphabetically. And if you disable that, it's going to sort them by creation order. So if we could at some point implement a custom ordering, then it would be pretty cool to assign maybe the first 10 numbers maybe like or nine at least to the um, first nine collections and then maybe I think it's with shift alt that you can switch to the layer below um, that would be really neat if we can if we can achieve that that's the main goal uh, we don't want to lose any speed ideally this should be faster than before so um, the idea is to have maybe even a panel here in the in the 3d view where you could um, list the layers, maybe the sorry, the layers or the collections, maybe with a UI list, something like this. Um, we still have to plan that. We have to uh, decide how to how it's gonna be designed. This will be all pretty, um, uh, pretty like pretty much available all the time, like it is always in Blender in developer.blender.org. 
developer.blender.org there is uh, there are projects that you can see you can follow uh, the projects well there is a million projects but the pink one well actually they changed the logo but it used to be pink the tag is pink I think it's called user interface there is a workboard and here there is there are a few of the uh, designed the threads basically so where you can chip in your ideas or you can um, discuss with other parts of Blender. Blender 2.8 still is a very um, um, it's its own thing basically but there are already a few topics here you'll find the icons one icons Blender 2.8 icons and here you'll find the icons and the people and the people discussing the icons for example the collection icons already has some options this was started by Paweł Lichowski he made some um, some proposals people were chatting and then more proposals and more proposals even Venn diagram and uh, this is the last one this is like a folder icon which I think it could, could work it looks pretty nice it's a bit conflicting with the actual uh, folder icon in Blender currently, but... Alt is second set, Shift is multiple at the same time. Shift is so you will add the layers, okay. Thank you Bone Studio for uh, the nice message. Great update, will this enable Blenders to have nerves? Objects like Cinema 4D. Nerves for modeling are incredibly handy when you can turn off some components individually. I never heard of that. What is that? It's not the same nerves that Blender has, right? <laughs> the the ones, the surface. It is the same. Are we talking about the same? The ancient, an ancient, really old nerve system from Blender. But actually, that's the first thing that I used when I started with Blender. I made a robot with that. Uh, it was a challenge, but it was the only thing that would be rounded because everything else had the polygons you could see them because I didn't also observe. Rant aside, we're in Eevee. What if we switch to Grease Pencil because there's also stuff to see there. Is there any questions? Please um, write it. You can also add. If you start typing add Blender today, you can add me and you will show um, in orange here. So I don't miss it in case there are too many questions. But actually, it goes pretty chill. I don't even know how many people are we, but it's better. I think we are live on on Blender Nation. That's scary. <laughs> Let's move. Blender, Chris Pencil. Yes. Let's see. Are you having a good time? <laughs> Is it fun? I'm having fun. Opening Blender is like the, the, the one time in the day where I actually get to an excuse to play with Blender. So let's get in frame, have it all the way here. This is the Chris Pencil branch. Everybody knows what Chris Pencil is, I guess. It's this tool that started as an annotation tool back in the day. Actually, it's been a while. <laughs> Um, I think it was first developed by Joshua Valigorith, I think, so many years ago. And um, the, the main use was to just draw, like make a... Um, I hope I am not breaking anything here. This is the Gris Pencil branch. Let me double check. Gris Pencil object, yes. I'm using undo. I'm very brave today. <laughs> you know, and do usually can break things. So let's see. Yes, it used to be an annotation tool. So basically, you're uh, you're animating, and then you want to um, make you know, a draw a core, for example, and annotate. Okay, this frame should be this, and this should be that way. Annotation tool, basically. Taking notes. <laughs> Over time, people started using it for so many other things like once animation support was added they started making animations with it so of course artists want more and then they wanted different brushes and then they wanted like backgrounds and then onion skinning and over time it became 
uh, its own tool basically. It became its own world, its own 2D animation tool. Which is great actually, because there is no such thing that has 2D and 3D in the same environment, as far as I know. Let's uh, let's get to it. Question, when you disable a collection, it won't affect simulation particles, right? It will, I think, if you not if you cache them. But simulations and particles are something that uh, at the moment in Blender 2.8 are not really in their best shape. In 2.7, they're not even the best shape. So uh, I wouldn't worry about that now. That is something that will be looked uh, at after. But basically when you disable a collection, it's not taken into account at all. So that's the uh, that's that's the goal. Maybe if you this if you hide them, we we still have to figure out how to make like invisible objects that affect an, um, um, collisions and particles and stuff, but they're not affected by um, the they're not visible in the viewport. We still have to see. So let's see. Oh, actually, there is a file that I can download from the cloud. There's not an advertisement. Well, it is an advertisement, basically. It is, but it's actually, I think, free to, to download. Everybody can download it. So, I'm going to download these files. Oh, no, it's not free to download. But I have a, <laughs> I have a uh, subscription. Don't worry. I'm going to download the three files. Because I was going to start from scratch, but I think it's better to just um, go here and open the files, download. These are all in Blender Cloud, you can see them, it's in cloud.blender.org. The first file, this is all a work in progress, it's not a final shot. It's a, a work in progress from the short movie, short open movie, it's not like any movie, it's an open movie called Hero. It's already, I already talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but basically, bam. Oops. Isn't that awesome? It's 2D, but actually, it's 3D. That's pretty nice. This, um, it's all using grease pencil, so they're... The big thing now in the new Grease Pencil is that Grease Pencil is an object. It moved into first level citizen inside Blender. So, you know the objects such as mesh, curves, metaballs, text, speakers. <laughs> is anybody using speaker? Yes, well, speakers and now Grease Pencil. So, the great thing about having an object is that it, it's, it's an object. So, you will see it in the outliner. As, an, as its own thing, you will, uh, you can patent it to stuff, you can add modifiers, that's pretty cool, and really, um, you can do uh, pretty much anything, because it, it's an object, you can render it, you can mix it um, with different uh, type of objects. This Grease Pencil object has its own materials even, so let's, uh, let, let's get to it. Is there any questions? Just let me know. Um, recently came back to Blender and I have to say it looks great. Yeah, it looks great, but it's just... <laughs> there's so many things going on that that's why uh, we're making this live stream. If everything is going fine, I think... It's a bit... Uh, is it boring? Is it not boring? People are silent. What modifiers can we use with Grease Pencil Object, Pablo? We're gonna see them in a bit. They're, they're pretty neat. But first, I wanted to show that these are objects. You can select them, move them around, because it is really an object. So if I disable the uh, only render mode, you will see that there are just objects. If I want to add a new one, I could just Shift A to add Chris Pencil, and the GP object, the name's gonna change, it's not the best. Uh, so this is an empty object, so it's basically like adding a mesh without vertices. If we add one, we have to start drawing, but you can also add a monkey, of course, because it's a Susan. It shouldn't be called monkey, it should be, it should be called Susan. The object is called Grease Pencil, we need to change that. Developers is Antonio Vasquez, the developer, looking at it. We have to change the name of Suzanne. Once you add it, 
you will see that you can move it around, you can rotate, you can scale, you can uh, do pretty much anything that you can do in a um, in any object. These objects, they have materials just like any other um, object inside Blender, but they have their 2D drawings in 3D. So what is something you have in Photoshop, for example, in your 2D object? You have layers, right? When you're working in 2D, you usually stack layers on top of each other. For Grease Pencil, this concept also exists. It's a, uh, it's, it's layer basically. So once you add it, you click on it, you press in the little pen icon. Do you get to see anything? I think I'm gonna make the UI a bit better, bit bigger and better and greater. If you click in the pen icon, you will see all the options for this object. So if you change the objects, they will, the, the options will, um, will, will change. This Suzanne by default has two layers. One is called colors, one is called line. You can disable, you can make them transparent. But this gives you an idea of more or less what um, what um, what an object is made of. When you're editing a mesh, do you edit them in object mode? No, you edit it in edit mode. These objects also have modes. They have edit mode, they have sculpt, yes. They have a weight paint mode and they have a draw. So draw is the, this will be like the, the edit mode or not. No, it's a new mode, it's, it's, it's drawing. You make it and you start making new stuff. For editing, the edit mode in this case is just for uh, transforming the, the data inside of this, uh, inside of this, this mesh. So now I'm in edit mode of the, the Suzanne and I can right click and oops for selecting the objects you have to click on the actual um, item so once you click it and then you enter edit mode you can select the individual dots or select everything with the with the border just like you would do in an object or is the proportional editing yes there is ah this is awesome so you can just pick a point, drag it, and basically you're distorting your 2D and drawing, which is pretty neat if you want to like um, animate the motion or like do some squash and stretch, you can do this with uh, the edit mode, or you can also sculpt on it, which is pretty neat. The sculpt mode, it's just like the regular sculpt mode. Once you're there, you can in the T panel in the um, uh, tool shelf, you can um, change the brushes, there's pinch, randomize, clone, smooth, thickness. Let's play with the, with the default one, the one that lets you move around. Like let's say the face grew here. But my favorite I think is the thickness because something that it really adds to the cartoon effect. You can just make some parts thicker there or you can hold control and then click and then it will make it thinner like more layer later that is pretty neat that is amazing it's like uh, playing with the vectors in in 2d but you're also in 3d so it's like it is it is going to be huge i think and in draw of course you can keep drawing and you don't have to hold d anymore you know the default uh, in Blender 2.7 you have to hold D and then click and drag. If uh, you enter draw mode, you're always in draw mode. So you can sh you don't have to hold D anymore. You can just start um, uh, start drawing. So you will have no uh, need to hold the D key, which is nice. And I have this amazing animation here and I'm not using it. But basically, this is all drawn frame by frame by using uh, the tools in Grease Pencil. So the camera seems to be moving. Yes, the camera is panning. And then you can see that frame by frame, these smears must be so much faster to do now that 
uh, look at that. That's amazing. There's... Those are called smears in animation. And you can go as hardcore as, as you want. So, for example, if you want this character to move his face in, I will go to Sculpt, move his face in, and then in the next frame, I will do it there. So, what? This is horrible. You see, I'm a very talented animator. <laughs> Boom, his, his face gets bigger, and then you can even... And now, if we play... Fantastic! I will tell Pepe Land that we should put this in the film. I'm kidding. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. They're doing a great job. There is uh, two more files that we can play with. Is there any question? Let me know. Uh, if you just press D and begin sketching, does it automatically put you in draw mode? Yes. Or do you need to go through the setup now? No, you don't have to. If you start, like this is an empty file. I'm even going to go in factory settings. And if I start, if I add a GP object right now, and I start drawing, already puts me in draw mode and then it stays in draw mode so I can just keep drawing and it will stay there so that is no problem and then edit um, tab key will go into edit mode and then you tap again to get out which is pretty nice let's open one of the other files and I don't want factory settings it's too small and it has an ugly theme <laughs> and that's because I made the 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 light theme, this one. So that's why I'm just saying no, the other one is ugly. Maybe one day we can get it default. Let's open the other file. Modifiers. This is awesome. I already said so, but it is awesome. Why? Because we are having compositing basically in the viewport so this EV by the way with Chris Pencil, the Chris Pencil branch of EV by the way so what you see here is a lamp so we are lighting the scene in a way and also you see the blur in this character so we have like out of focus like depth of field, fake depth of field per object and that is amazing you select the, the um, here select the object I can select it from here and in the um, modifiers you will see the modifiers list basically the UI has to be worked on <laughs> there is no need to have a full width um, slider here it will be that's the list of the problems basically at the moment. But basically you can choose in pixels how much you want to blur in each axis. So you have X and Y. So that way you can have it very blurry. And it's animated so you can change it frame by frame. You can make it animate. You can key it. Does the Chris Pencil object work with vector, vector graphics or pixels or both? There are... Well, pixels in the sense of the, um, the VFX, the effects for the viewport, those are pixels. But the rest, the actual um, object is just vertices. So it's, it's, um, it's a verti vertis vertex with a thickness. So... Yeah, it's vectors, but it's more than that. <laughs> so in edit mode, you can edit exist existing strokes, but you cannot make new ones. Um, yeah, I think so. Let's find out. Uh, he almost added a... Okay, let's add a monkey. Wow. <laughs> Behind the monkey stares. Monkey sees. Monkey loves you. Edit mode, and let's see if I can... Yes, I can start drawing in edit mode. 
So you can. Awesome. There, there are a few more tools that I, I would like to show. I don't know, if we are we reaching the hour? I don't want to make it longer than one hour though, because it will be a bad start if we start making longer than an hour. No, I think we are cool. Then let's continue. This object, I'm going to delete the monkey. Sorry, monkey. Sorry, monkey needs a hug. This is a uh, Black Mirror reference, by the way. If I select the object, you will see that it's lit from the top. What is that? It's a modifier, of course. It's a modifier that takes an object and then you can basically move the object around to control where the light is coming for this, um, for this layer, for this object, sorry. So the other object also has a light, but if I disable it, like I will disable any modifier, then you can just skip all of that lighting and only affect one, which is pretty nice. What if you don't want this object, the other guy, to be affected? Okay, I'm gonna remove the, the blur for now. What if you don't want it to be affected by the light, but you still want to make it a bit darker? You could add a modifier type tint, and then you just increase the factor. By default, it's color black. So there you go. So you are, you're making it darker, you're making it like affected by light, but it's actually not affected by light, it's only affected by the light here. So uh, that is pretty neat. Thank you for subscribing. The... Um, the modifiers, they're all per object, and there are some modifiers that depend on the view. These modifiers are um, mainly listed here on the VFX. These ones are the Maybe they should belong somewhere else. This we need to needs to be decided, but basically they depend on the view. So for example, the sphere one, it's um it's one that if we get to see it, the object, there you go. So this object is basically deciding where and it looks pretty cool. Look at that up here. Where the swirl stars starts. <laughs> wow, look at that. That's pretty nice. Awesome. Okay, that was a bit too much, the, the, the radius. But if I make the radius smaller around this object, then I can move the object around and I can make it... I think this is more fun than actually useful if you have it at these values. If you put it a bit lower that the angle shouldn't be that hard, maybe a, a little bit, then you then it's, uh, it's easier. So... It's a modifier, so you can enable it, disable it at any time, and you don't you wouldn't have to edit your strokes, which can be handy if you don't want to mess with your strokes. There's also thickness, but one that is pretty nice is the noise. Is this the one? So the noise works in animation. Let's add it to the other guy. This this one has way too much going on, poor guy. Thickness. Let's add one that is called noise. So the noise, you see, it adds noise. It basically, you know, those um, the, that effect that when you're writing and it has like like vibrates. So when you have, um, let's make it on an empty file just just to make it. Glitter. So basically, I'm. Uh, I keep forgetting to use the Susan. Let's use a monkey. There you go. This was mo this was designed by uh, Matias Mendiola, one of the artists that are working together with the developers. So mainly it's uh, Pepeland, Daniel Martinez Lara, and uh, Matias Mendiola that are working together with the developers to get this uh, to the next to, to get Chris Pencil to the next level. So the one I want to show is the. noise so let's increase the value so basically this will do is add a little bit of noise 
to every frame but you can also make it like every other frame so that will look more like a drawing if you see I'm making the factor a bit too extreme but you get the other oh, thickness okay that's a bit too much but if we make it thickness a bit less basically you're changing the um, the value of the uh, the thickness and my favorite my favorite is the let's see look can I I don't have the I should have plugged the pen I'm using should I plug the pen should I break my computer by plugging it is it even working yes it is working wow it is working sorry it's the, the amazement because I'm a Linux user so I'm always used to things not working the way you want but it is I'm just plugged my stylus and now I can start drawing because I wanted to draw something um, just to show you that's ugly um, no you are ugly Pablo <laughs> and I just wanted to show you that Chris Pencil has memory Yes, what does it mean? It means that when you draw, you can add a modifier type build, like the one in Blender, and Chris Pencil will draw for you. AI! <laughs> well, sort of, kind of AI. But that is actually pretty, pretty nice. Because for stop motion, for um, not stop motion, for motion graphics, for example, that is actually a very nice. Uh, uh, that on top of the let's add some. So when is it finishing? It's finishing here. So if we do this and we add some noise on top of it, let's start here, and we add some noise. Every other frame. We can change the color. I didn't like the look at the colors. So the colors are basically uh, palettes. It's the same way we have um, palettes like like uh, materials inside Blender. Um, we will have palettes. We can have palettes. So it's not that you change the color and you start drawing. Basically, each uh, stroke has a palette assigned to it. So uh, you can change the palette anytime. You can click. You have an onion skinning and didn't even went through it. There are a million things. I didn't even change the background. There is also grease pencil paper that I didn't change. That is for the background. Um, which is a, some sort of um, layer between the objects and the scene. So if I have an object that I add like a 3D object. Like a good old Suzanne here. Is drawing on top of my mesh because I have it on top. But if I um, if I change the the paper and I select where's my monkey here, if I select the grease pencil, then it will show um, the the paper will show in front. So um, there's a grid if you want to, and you can just change the size of the grid. Like like I could be doing these kind of things for like forever. There is the the onion skinning that I didn't uh, I didn't play with, and the palettes, the different colors. Once by default, it comes with a few palettes, like red, green, blue. So it's more like for annotations. They are not the most pretty colors in the world, but you can always change it. You can you can do um, you can change the, the the palette anytime. And once you change it, you can keep drawing, and you can change the palette. So you um, there is a, a shortcut. That at the moment is F6. That will show the list of palettes that you have available. Or you can also click in the header, which eventually, once we have the the, the tool shelf all set up, is gonna use the tool shelf. But then you can change the the palette, and then you can start drawing. 
and I have the build enabled so basically I'm um, drawing on top of the, the build and we have the monkey and this is Eevee so I can just go on I started and again I'm, I'm playing with everything as it is <laughs> actually playing so I'm actually playing with fire here but it should be fine anyway I will not bore you with this how is it going awesome once like 2.8 is out I can finally kick after effects out of my pipeline yes just you don't, don't wait until Blender 2.8 is out just start tra using it now use it in 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 um, like share it with other tools don't you don't have to uh, use only blender wait until the release and then start using blender because then there will be so many things to learn that you will just stay behind so my advice is to go to blender.org download experimental builds and start playing now because right now because the amount of features grows right if you start learning the 10 features there are many more but the 10 features that are today then you will get used to them it's, it's great but then they will add five more features and then you can learn those five and then you can go with the tool which is i think a good good way to to learn okay some things may change some things in the ui may the button may move somewhere but it's not like you're gonna forget how to use the tool the tool is gonna be the same so my advice is to start using 2.8 no for pro don't use it for production use for own your own bubble stuff but you've seen the files that that people are are sharing online they're amazing they're like it's it's awesome so don't wait too much play with it get used to it make collections make filters make everything use it question gris pencil object use materials no they don't uh well sort of yeah materials but like palettes just uh i i just explain it now in a in this um in this video awesome i think it's a bit too dark it's probably calculating still or maybe i mess up the file maybe i did maybe i'm messing up the the stream now let me close this yes I screw the stream, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> Oops. I am trying computer back. Did it come back? Yes. In a way. Wow. <laughs> anyway, the computer now got a bit stuck, but I think we are back. Yes. Just awesome. Audio is still. Stream is fine. Wow, well, loading a very heavy file. It's uh, recording the screen, I'm recording it as a backup, and it's streaming live. So, and it's playing music, and it has it just compiled Blender twice. So, um, I'm glad it's fine. Yes, awesome. I didn't mess up the very first Blender today. So, let's keep it short and sweet. I don't know if it's short, actually, it's been an hour. So, let's, uh, let, let's, let's make it a thing. Do you like it? Do you like the episode? This one was packed with stuff. Not only the outliner, not only the grease pencil, but really there's so many things. And it was super <laughs> nerdy, actually. I like it because it's just 
sit down and use Blender. So um, let's uh, let's meet next week. I don't know if I did, uh, if on Thursday. I think I'm gonna do it on Tuesday because um, it's it works better for me. It's not in the middle like at the end of the week because tomorrow is Friday. On Fridays at the Blender Institute we have these um, these uh, meetings, so there is a lot to do. So I think I'm gonna do it on Tuesday at the same time though. It's no Blender didn't crash actually. It's a uh, I closed it myself, but the thing is that it was opening a file and I closed it at the same time. So I switch to a different index. Well, anyway, it doesn't important. It's not important, but and um, yeah, that's it. On Mondays, I'm doing something similar to this. Very, very actually playing the same thing, but in Spanish. So on Tuesday, for me, we will work better because I already have the 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 this prepare the files and everything prepared. So um, I think it will work best at the same time. Might be a bit too late for some. Sorry about that. It's like two, like three a.m. in India, for example. Maybe we can find a better time. I had a great time, actually. It's so so nice, so nice to see people. There was like an eighty or ninety at the peak. So let's do it again. See you next week, Tuesday. Same channel, same, uh, same, 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 same dude, same everything, same vibes, and um, I will see 